Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and do you guys remember this video that I posted a few days ago? Well, good news! OP just posted the final update, so we will be featuring that for today. And as per usual, if you already listened to the original video, you can go ahead and skip to the timestamp on your screen right now, and if you haven't listened to it, don't worry, I will still be featuring the entire story on this video. So sit back, relax, and hold on to your Dragon Balls, everybody. Let's begin. I discovered the affair when I came home early to tell her about my diagnosis. Posted by Reddit user Throwaway Swan Song. Throwaway account for all of the obvious reasons. TW, terminal illness. Significant other caught in action. I guess the only reason I am coming here is because in my situation and course of action does not allow me to fully disclose to those close to me. On the 1st of December I got the news I was dreading. All of the tests have confirmed the diagnosis. I have stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So basically this will be my last holiday season. I am okay with what is going to come. I am at peace with that. I have had a life well lived. All of my loved ones will be taken care of. I am naturally a private person so my wayward wife Jane is unaware of my tests. I did not want to worry her until I had answers. So I head home early to have the talk. This is not something I want to do over the phone or text. Well as you can guess since I am here, my life changed more than once that afternoon. When I arrive at the house I notice the car of one of my business partners in the drive. There was no mistaking it, flashy expensive with a personalized license tag. To say this is out of the ordinary is an understatement. I pull up our home camera system on my phone and notice it is in privacy mode, not recording. So I let it be and drove off to my farm property. Now our camera system is for safety and I never look at it unless there is a concern. With that said, I also love to watch for wildlife on the outside cameras. I also find it oddly satisfying to watch storms come through. So for my own enjoyment, years ago I configured a second video recorder to archive the cameras to local storage. That storage is not accessible via my phone. So when I was at the farm, I opened up my computer and looked at the other server to confirm what my gut was telling me. And sure enough there they were, snuggling in the living room, drinking wine, dancing, then going up to the bedroom suite. Apparently they left the doors open, because the microphone recorded their activities after they left the camera view. With my limited time left, I wanted answers, but I don't want the drama of a confrontation and divorce. Call me what you will. But all of my devotion and love for her left me that afternoon. I have all of the emotions that are to be expected. I know that I am not to blame. I have been a loyal, romantic and attuned partner. I am now thinking about myself. I know what is important to me. So I called my lawyer, and we reviewed my will and our prenup. I told him what was going on. We worked on understanding of how long and to what extent this affair has been going on. What has been found is disturbing, and I either clearly did not know the woman I shared two plus decades of life with or something in her changed. At this time I am not going to say anything to my kids, wayward wife and I never had children, or wayward wife. I am going to put on a stiff upper lip and get through the holidays. Give the kids and grandkids one last holiday memory with me involved. I will be the doting father and grandfather, and then try to play the doting husband role. Some background for some of the obvious questions. A P is a widower and is not remarried. He is a business partner, but not a friend. I do not invest with friends. I never married my twin's mother. It was her choice and I completely agree with her that at that time she made the correct decision. My kid's mother married a very wonderful man when the kids were seven. Sarah and Steve never had kids of their own. I got my head out of my ass when the kids were three. I have been very involved with them before that, but that is when I started my road to be the father I wanted to be. Sarah and I co-parented well together, and I would call Steve a friend. Sarah, Steve, and I are in our 60 seconds. Jane is almost 60. A P is in his 50 seconds. Jane and I are both in our first marriage. We were in our 30 seconds when we married. What do I need? An outside outlet and release valve. If I am going to accomplish my goal, I need to vent my anger and talk through my situation. What better outlet than internet strangers? I am at peace with how and when my life will conclude. TLDR got a terminal illness diagnosis and found out my significant other was cheating when I came home early to break the news. Update 1 First, I want to thank you all for all your support. It really has helped. I have read all of your comments and it has given me a lot to think about. I am going to give some general information to help clarify my situation. Sarah and I were very young when we had the twins. They were a surprise but always wanted. So the twins are in their 40 seconds and the grandkids are all teens and older. Christmas is a week-long affair every year. We spend Christmas through New Year on the farm. We go cut down a tree after everyone arrives. 
We decorate, cook, play, and celebrate as a family. Sarah and Steve have been a part of this tradition since I bought the farm. I remained steadfast in not telling anyone until after the new year. If I told Sarah, she would not be able to keep it in. I don't want to place Steve in a position to lie to his wife. I want the kids and grandkids to enjoy the week. We will have plenty of time to cry and prepare in a few weeks. Jane's presence this week will just be a small detail in the long run. Really, I don't care about her anywhere near the rest of the family. The finances are very interesting. Jane and I met and were married after we both were very established in our job and wealth. She had a good job with a great pension. She also had two inheritances that were in a trust. We agreed early on that we were both comfortable and we would not disclose to each other our entire worth, by her insistence. We also have a prenup where any property or trust that predate the marriage and any income from those resources are not considered marital property. Again on her insistence. Now I have provided both property, housing with utilities. I purchase the travel, food, and fuel. Basically, I support her 100%. Her income and wealth is spent by her on herself. She purchased her car, clothes, personal travel, and cosmetic surgery. She is a very beautiful woman on the outside but has shown she is very ugly inside. A few days after I got my diagnosis, I announced my retirement from the non-profit. Now knowing what I know, I noticed Jane was a bit uncomfortable. I can guess why. I will be around more often. So tomorrow is my last day of work. Now I will be focusing on spending time with the family. I gave the camera server info to my lawyer and gave him access from his office. So I don't know if they had activities again, but I would assume yes. Again I don't care at this point. I know who I am and what is my worth and a P is a big step down. As flashy a P is, I am low-key. I drive a 15-year-old pickup truck. I like jeans and t-shirts and coveralls in the winter. I know for a fact that a P does not have anywhere near the wealth that Jane thinks he does. How? Since the trust has invested in his business, I get quarterly financials. I don't tell anyone how much I have that is between my accountants and me. But let's just say that the trust has been growing for 30 years. I live a modest life. And there is enough there for my great-great-grandchildren to enjoy the farm and have their education paid for. Once Jane knows what she lost, that will be her reckoning. I just won't see it. December really got busy. We did our normal social rounds these last weekends. AP was at one of the parties. It was hard to not keep an eye on Jane and him. I don't think I was caught. With being so busy and wrapping up everything at the job, I have had an easier time keeping it together. Jane has not expressed anything that would lead me to conclude that she knows I know. I am not proud of this, but I still sleep in the same bed. I have been selfish with her as of late. I feel like I am using her. But she has apparently been using me for at least the better part of this year. I am not as honorable as many of you have made me out to be. I hate this small amount of deceit. So don't worry about Jane getting everything because she will not. The trust is in great hands. I have detailed instructions on how it is to be managed. Thanks to the comments, I have made plans in case my health turns for the worse sooner than I want or if I pass unexpectedly. I have also made plans to have in-home care when it is needed. Jane will not be my caregiver. If I become incapacitated, the lawyer will tell Sarah, Steve, and the kids. Jane will be blocked from me. All important papers, valuables, and whatnots have been moved to a safe location. Finally, I have also started letters to each family member and Jane. Those have been harder than I thought. So I wanted to update you all before all of the festivities start. I might check in during the holiday week, but if I don't, it is planned and expected. Again thank you all. TLDR, I am getting my affairs in order. Final update. Mission accomplished. We had a great drama-free holiday week. I have made it to 2023. I apologize to anyone in advance. I find humor about my condition helps me. I am finding I am being a bit selfish currently. All of the participants dispersed yesterday afternoon. I only have a few updates because I am not going to talk about my week with my family. That is for me to cherish. Observations about wayward wife and this week. I honestly think this is the first time she stepped out. Being with all of us this whole week seems to take a toll on her. It is funny how when you know something, a person's actions make more sense. She was secretive about her phone. She stepped out of our family gathering to get some air quite a few times. The best was when she needed to run into town and one of the grandkids wanted to go to town also. The gymnastics she did to not take the grandkid. I have to admit that I kinda played with it by asking why not. So the affair is continuing. With me now retired and she is asking me about my plans for the day or week. So I go ahead and tell her, and then ask her what her plans are. Later this week, I will suggest we meet up for lunch due to me being in the same area as her on our plans. Just to F with her. I guess it was true someone said on another post. Unpredictability is the cheater's worst enemy. This morning I met with my lawyer. 
I had made decisions and asked him to draw up papers. I replaced my temporary will with my new permanent will. That has been signed and should not have to change again. In preparation for all hell breaking loose, I had him draw up divorce papers based on the prenup and the evidence of the affair. She gets nothing but 25% of our shared assets. Think housewares and furniture. I keep all of my liquid assets, retirement funds, and items I purchased with my own wealth. Also if I push it she is required to pay alimony. I have signed them and have a packet created with all of our evidence of the affair. I am holding this in case I want to use it. I sold my loan to the trust. I will allow the trustees to convert it to shares in a peas company. Speaking of the trust, I have decided how I want it managed. I will drop myself to a 1% trustee. The twins will get the majority of the trusteeship. The four grandkids will make up the rest. All of the grandkids' proxies will be Sarah and Steve. As each turns 24, the kids' trusteeship will move from Sarah and Steve to the grandkid. If a fraction is left over, Sarah gets the extra share, vote or value. I have planned a meeting with the kids, Sarah and Steve for next week. I plan on telling them everything then. They have to sign documents and they will want to know why I am doing this. So when this is done, my personal value will be my liquid assets, personal property, and the money from the AP's loan. So in the worst case scenario, Jane will get very little compared to the assets and value in the trust. In the next couple of weeks, I will disperse the few personal items I want to go to the kids and grandkids. Those are already at a safe location where my lawyer has access. Some of you commented on my health. Well, if I was not clear, I am not fighting this. I am letting nature take its course, so I have no ill side effects from any treatments. I did notice this week I was more easily tired out. The family noticed also. I played it off as the old man getting older. I still have the cough. The cough is what started it all. It was my tumors in the lung that led to all of the diagnosis. I just played that as a lingering COVID cough. I expect to go downhill pretty fast once other issues pop up. But by that time everyone will know. And thank you for all of your well wishes on that aspect. I am planning to spend time with the family. A large trip with all of their different obligations would be tough. That reason is why this week was so important to me. It was the last time I could be with all of them for an extended amount of time. I am thinking of a small trip for myself. We will see. I do plan on spending a day one-on-one -on -one with each child and grandchild. That is my next goal. The letters are not done. Those are very difficult. I will let you all know how the meeting next week goes. Best to you all. TLDR. My week went as I wanted it. My affairs are in order. OP. You are such a lovely man, and there are really shitty people out there who get to live a long, pathetic, and useless life, yet we have people such as yourself that are robbed of the same. Look man, I'm really sorry about your situation, but I just wanted to let you know that you are a good man, a good father, and a good friend. A true Giga Chad. Update number 3. I discovered the affair when I came home early to tell her about my diagnosis. Trying again. Posted by Reddit user Throwaway Swan Song. I tried to post this yesterday but it was blocked for moderator review. I am trying one more time. Another commentor suggested I move it to another subreddit. We will see. I had my lawyer, a notary, the twins, Sarah and Steve to my farm today. The tasks I needed are done. This process has gone about as well as it could have gone. It is understandable that the family is hurt and angry. When everyone arrived and they saw my lawyer and the notary, the tension in the room was high. I asked them to just sit and listen to me and after I finish, they are to sign the papers. After signing the documents I will answer all questions. They all know about the trust. I explained to them it was time for me to release control of the trust to them. I explained how important the trust was in my life. Why I started it. How it was outside of my marriage to Jane by mutual decision. I also left instructions on how I wanted them to direct and use the trust. We explained that the trust would be split between the twins and the grandchildren with Sarah and Steve equal proxy votes for the grandkids until each of them reached the age of 25. Their trust in me was evident because they signed the documents and got them notarized. After that was done, copies were collated and I dismissed my lawyer and the notary. I saw them out and thanked them for coming out on a Sunday. They both were gracious as always. When I returned to the dining room acting as a conference room, they all were quiet. My daughter broke the silence with the first question. Well, it was definitely a multi-part question or a stream of consciousness. As soon as she stopped, I started with my health. I explained the fact of my diagnosis. I listened to them making plans on how we are going to fight this. And this is where I stopped them. I explained the odds. I told them I have already had a second opinion. Then I told them what you all already know. I am not going to seek treatment. 
I am going to let nature take its course. We spent the next hour to an hour and a half arguing. My daughter left the room a few times. Sarah had to go get her. While they were gone, Steve, my son, and I had a heart to heart. They understand where I am coming from. They might not agree but they understand. The consensus is that Sarah and my daughter will come around. After all this calmed down, and I knew the next question was coming. When did I find out? And I told them. And now there was another round of anger and sadness. I explained that I wanted one more holiday week where I was not a dead man walking. That I was selfish. I wanted this diagnosis to be after the holidays. I don't want it to taint their holidays for the rest of their lives. My daughter sensing there was still more, went all Kajak. She was not going to leave the room until all were out. She asked how in the hell did Jane not tell her. That is when I dropped the last bomb. I told them exactly the same account of events that I did in my first post. That is the first time I truly saw the fire of anger in my daughter's eyes. I then told them she to this day does not know I know. I basically answered the same questions, plots and etc. that you all suggested. So I guess you all prepped me well. In the end, I told them I valued them way more than Jane. For me, I just want to spend the rest of my days in peace not worrying about Jane. I had to explain my actions during the holiday week. They also pieced together her steps outside for air. And the trip into town where she did not want to bring the grandkid. They were worried I did this all alone. I told them I have some social media friends that helped me through the roughest of this time. I refused to tell them where and how. They can learn later, but I still want this space for myself. The emotions were really raw, and we have been talking off and on as a group for a few hours, but I told them I needed to go back and talk about the trust. They understand that the trust will be very helpful in not allowing Jane to obtain my hard-earned wealth, that it protects them, and that is why she is not part of this meeting. With that said, I then needed to share the financials of the trust. I am pretty sure that they all saw the trust as a tax dodge or just a way to protect assets in a marriage where the kids are from another woman. They were not prepared for me to share the finances. As I started to go through the assets and the balance sheets, the room just fell silent. Then there was one question. Why did you work so hard those years when you had this much? I explained my philosophy of personal finance, something they have heard many times before and take to heart. But I told them that I lived off the trust all of these years. I put them through college with that trust. I made time in my life for them with that trust. And I was able to work for a non-profit for basically free because of that trust. And if there is any example I want to outlive in them and their children, is to use this trust to do better for others. And not to just write a check for a charity here and there, but to work for something they believe in. In my years with this non-profit, I have done so much more in training others and building relationships than just writing a check cannot do. I am not happy that today everyone's lives at that table changed in so many ways good and bad because of me. It was not the way I wanted it to happen. But it is done. They know all of it. I have begged and pleaded that they let me deal with Jane. Not to talk about the trust with anyone. We will run a status quo for now. When I get sicker, then things will change. They all have agreed. We spent the next few hours making a meal, talking, crying, laughing, and breaking into smaller groups. They all have left about an hour ago. But I expect the twins to come back. I know they will let their spouses in on what is going on. That is just the way they are. And I love my two-in-law's children very much. I knew that last night was my last quiet night. I feel a weight lifted but replaced with another weight of worry. Thank you all for reading. Your thoughts and prayers are so valuable to me. Again tell your loved ones how you feel and give them a hug. TLDR. I told my family and got the trust transferred. It has been a rough day. Wow OP, if you aren't the epitome of the phrase lead by example, then I don't know who is. OP, this is just a suggestion, but one thing you may think about doing is to start making recordings or just writing a journal with your thoughts that your family can come back to whenever they want. It doesn't have to be anything significant, just your daily thoughts and maybe some of your favorite stories and things that you like to share so that they have it with them when they miss you. That being said OP, I really do appreciate that you've been sharing all of this tough shit with us. So in return, OP, come on, let's go do something fun here on Reddit. Let's go to r slash furry porn. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my YouTube channel for you to watch absolutely free. So consider clicking that super thanks just below the video title or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.